Om Shanti. We started that journey inwards in which we were looking at the things that are invisible that are within the self, which actually make up the identity of the self and remind me that I am something quite different to the physical body. Let's go further in this journey and explore what that really means. What is it that I truly am? I've understood the things that I'm not. I'm not the body, I'm not the nationality, I'm not the color of my skin, I'm not the religion I was born into or was converted to. I'm none of those things. I'm not my profession. I'm not my possessions. I'm not the people that I'm related to. That's external, the inner being. What is that? Well, I'll share a few thoughts with you and you can experiment with these ideas and see if they're useful for you. The physical body, and we know a lot about that. The inner being, we have many, many conflicting ideas that we've heard. And the inner being actually are all the things that are not visible. My feelings, my thoughts, my emotions, and then another part, my conscience, my reason, my logic, my understanding, and then another part which is huge, and that is my sanskaras, the predispositions that I carry, the imprints that I carry that propel me in life and move me in a certain direction. So something happens and these instincts, predispositions, sanskaras, they will dictate the quality of my thinking, the decisions that I make, and then according to that decision, the actions that I perform, but also that imprint of every experience and every action is then again a part of me, the soul. Let me use the word soul. The word Atma is interesting. It came from the word atom. When scientists first discovered atoms, they thought, what is the indivisible form of, of matter? And they thought it was atom. And so from that word, Atma came the word atom, that which is indivisible. But of course, later we, just, we understood that protons, electrons, neutrons are all part of atom. But this word actually is connected with Atma. And Atma is the indivisible part, the part of me, that me, which is actually the eternal I that being which can never die. The body has a date of beginning and ending, but soul doesn't have a date of beginning or ending. So you can create physical forms, but you can't create a soul. And in the words of our different scriptures, it would come in, in different texts, it would say things like, that which the force of wind, fire, air, ether cannot touch, that which has no beginning and no end, eternal. And so that is that inner being. Soul and body come together to allow us to experience life here, which is beautiful. But because we forget the soul, then we lose charge and we lose control of our physical form. And so just see what happens. I say things that I don't mean to. It comes out of my lips and then I say, I wish I hadn't. Well, that's because I lacked mastery. I didn't think first and speak next. I forgot. I forgot who I am and I just reacted. My eyes, what are my eyes doing? My eyes are constantly looking around here and there. 
and it's a big distraction for the mind. Yes, I need to have information about where I am so that I can be properly located and oriented. But that's not what the eyes are doing. The eyes are just taking in random information, looking around here and there. And so there's no control. And so I'm trying to focus, I'm trying to concentrate, but my eyes are getting distracted by things all around me. And sometimes not just distracted, sometimes attracted. I see something sitting on the chair, somebody's forgotten it, left it behind. And what do I do with it? Well, it's a very attractive, very latest device, a new phone. And, well, they've forgotten it, they've left it behind. And I just slip it into my pocket. Instead of asking around or handing in it in at lost and found, I think, oh, well, it's okay. And so my eyes deceived me. It didn't belong to me, but my eyes got attracted and I thought, well, so what? It doesn't matter. And so I was actually led into deception by my eyes and I did something which my heart and my conscience actually tell me was not right. That's a very gross example. We don't often do things like that. We don't often find phones lying around in that way. But think about walking past a shoe shop and your eyes see something that looks very attractive. And I've already got a dozen pair of shoes in my closet, but those shoes were very nice and I'd love to have them. And I actually don't need them at all, but my eyes saw the image got imprinted in my heart and my heart said, yes, that's what I want. And maybe I'll buy them and maybe they'll just sit in my cupboard for months and months and months. Who knows? So my eyes do deceive me. My ears. I hear my name being mentioned, or I think it's my name. I'm not sure, but I become very interested in the conversation. I was getting on with my work, and those two people were having a cup of tea, and they were chatting, and I think I heard my name. I may not be accurate in that, maybe I didn't hear properly, but my mind gets totally distracted and I'm focused on what they're saying instead of focusing on the work I need to do. My taste. The doctors told me no more sugar, no more sweet things, and yet my taste buds are craving for some sugar. And so when I see something, especially if it's something I like, I forget the doctor's advice and I just reach out and put it into my mouth. So we're constantly being led astray by our senses. It's time to come back to mastery. If you've experienced being here the light that shines, the soul, then you'll know that it's possible first to be detached from the body and be aware of my eternal identity as a soul. Then in that detachment, I can be the master of my physical senses. I'm sitting in this chair and if I get very attached to it, and I say, I want this chair to move with me. I'm stuck here and the chair is heavy. It's not going to move with me. I'm going to have a very hard time. But yes, I'm here. I'm using it, enjoying it, but I'm not attached to it. And so then I'm free to move, but equally, I can then lift the chair and take it with me if that's my choice. So detachment is a step in being able to take control. Then I can control the chair and put it where I want it. If I'm sitting in it, attached to it, how am I going to lift it? Not possible. 
And so if I want to have mastery over my physical senses, my eyes, my ears, my taste, my touch, everything, I need first this process of detachment. And so the experiment that we had of being in silence, going inside, and in that inner awareness of silence, then yes, I can feel I exist even when the body does not exist. This body is very fragile, perishable. A bug may attack it, a virus may attack it. Anything can happen to this. I may have a fall. My organs might fail for some reason or another. But yet, when I'm aware of being the master of my physical body, I keep my mind in equilibrium. So what I hear, I'll first of all filter. Do I want to keep this in information or let it one ear and out of the other? Fine. My eyes, what am I seeing? Let me ask myself, is it useful to carry on seeing this? Sometimes we see a picture which isn't quite right, and we know it's not right, but our eyes want to continue to look at that. Or maybe a scene of violence. And the longer I look at that scene, whether it's on Facebook, whether it's on video, television, on an advertisement, whatever it may be, but that scene of violence, the longer I see it, the more deeply I absorb it. And I've absorbed violence within myself. And then, of course, my reactions and situations are also going to be the same of violence, because that's what I've taken inside. So every one of my physical senses is vital to my life and well-being. I would not be able to enjoy anything in life if it were not for the physical senses. But yet, I have to come back to the state of mastery. So the practice of what we call soul consciousness is fundamental to spiritual growth and also to meditation. It's, it's very simple, it's not complicated at all. Just have the thought, who is seeing? I, the soul, am seeing through my eyes. Who is speaking? I, the soul, am speaking through my mouth. And I can be in charge of all of these things. And this is the time when we need to look at this and see how we can experiment with this process of detachment. Detachment doesn't mean negativity. Detachment doesn't mean rejection. Detachment doesn't mean that there's dislike. Detachment simply means being free to be able then to use whatever it is I have in the best way possible. And so detachment from the body is absolutely vital to be able to come to the experience and the awareness of I, the soul. And when I do that, I discover something very beautiful. I, the soul, have qualities that are eternal within my own world. My inner treasure store has peace and love and truth and joy and purity. And of course, that's a challenge. Am I able to stay peaceful at all times, no matter what the upheaval may be? Yes, if I practice soul consciousness and detachment. Am I able to follow the path of love at all times without dislike or hatred or any other negative feelings coming in? Yes. We've seen people, yogis, demonstrate that pure love means just simply to give without expecting anything in return. And so, yes, pure love is there within the soul. Truth is there. Joy is there. Purity is there. 
And so the more I experience through my own experimentation, the awareness of I, the soul, looking, listening, speaking, eating, doing, whatever it is I do, this reminder to the self, who am I? And to be able to experience the separation of soul and body, working together, but possible to experience this. Let's have a moment in which we go on this inner journey. I focus my thoughts on the center of the forehead. I can feel this energy within. I shine. I radiate God's light. I am the inner being, separate to the physical form. I am a being of peace. A being of love. A being of light and might. A being who resolves to practice this awareness of I, the soul doing all the things I need to do, but to stay in this highest awareness. Om Shanti.